Welcome to a show about things you can see Without going far and a lot of them are free If you thought there was nothing in the old heartland You ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Randy does the steering so he won't hurl Mike's got the map, such a man of the world That's done with the camera, kinda heavy on his shoulder And that giant ball of tape, it's a world record holder Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Look out, they're driving hard Checking out the world in their own backyard Checking out the world in their own backyard So where are we? Dear TV Mailbag, would you call that a confidence builder? Hi, Don the Camera Guy here, somewhere in southern Mississippi, trapped as usual in the back of a cramped minivan with a pair of producers whose mission is twofold, to find strange cool stuff along the road. Hey, what's that? Then make me work like a dog. That must be the chair they were talking about. Solid oak. It's got to be more comfortable in this Chrysler bench seat. I would like to climb up there. But security's tight here. Well, it looks like it would actually rock with enough, uh, with enough force on it. That chair's designed for a real lard butt. Well, we came, we saw, we did it. We left. We left. Cherish is the word I use to well, we have seen big chairs before, but we've never been to the ocean, which I suspect is how Ocean Springs gets its name. This place has particular import to Mike because it's home to the Walter Anderson Museum. Walter, you see, was an artist who, while not self-taught, went to incredible lengths to do what he did. Changed my life. And apparently doing it made quite an impression on quite a few others. I think it's very hard sometimes for people from the older generation that might have been contemporaries of Walter Anderson. You know, they can't imagine that this has happened and that you're here and that I'm here because of that guy. We're standing, of course, in the little room, which is actually a room from his cottage. Uh, the east wall here, and it does correspond to the east, starts with the rooster crowing and the sun rising. On the south wall, um, it's noonday, and you can see rainbows out over the gulf. And then on the west wall behind us, the sun is setting. Up on the top is actually uh, a zinnia form. He loved the zinnia because of the, the concentric shapes and drew it over and over. Uh, Walter Anderson's life was uh, not an easy one. He was someone that suffered from mental illness, particularly during a very concentrated four-year period. And uh, his doctors essentially suggested or told the family that if you want him to survive, release him of all responsibility. So they, they did that. And what he ultimately wound up doing, of course we know now, is to spend most of the last 18 years of his life living on Horn Island, which is an incredibly beautiful place, but very remote, only accessible by boat. He had his own little rowboats and sailboats, and he would go out, and depending on the weather, it might take him 24 hours to get there. And so he would pack up trash cans, like metal trash cans with art supplies and cans of food. And he had like his little portable studio for a hat, and uh, with like brushes and watercolors, and he would wait out like to hear, you know, and just be incredibly still and let everyone get kind of used to him, you know, and just you know, stand there very quietly in pain. And so all the wildlife would just basically do what they do. This, this is the boat. This is the boat. This is the last boat. And um, this is not a very big boat. We're looking at what, 10 feet here, maybe? And, and I often think about too, you know, if you're, if you're taking this out there and you're flipping it upside down and you're sleeping under it, how do you sleep under this? So should we go try and recreate it? I think you should. I really do. I mean, if you were real men, you would do this, right? Don could do it. Let's have Don do it. <laughs> this is a carving that he did. Yeah, this is a, some... a really fine example of his sculpture. And 
And his sculpture is just, I think, amazing. It uh, has incredible sense of movement and fluidity. He, he's just an amazing guy, and he was willing to throw himself into nature and just do whatever it took to, to be there with it and be a participant. For him, that process of understanding, or as he called it, realization, that was the thing. And once it was realized or better understood by drawing or painting it or carving it, what was created was superfluous. Walter Anderson is both uh, visionary, expressionist, impressionist. He's all over the map. I think you were very wise to fold him into your Hold your on. show. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, you heard that part. You got that part where he said I was very wise. Yeah, right. 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 Uh, that wasn't ruling. Oh, God. No problem. I got it all, which is why about now I think it's time to be leaving Walter World and heading just a few blocks away to some very scenic beauty. This is the actual golf, and we, along with the world's largest ball of videotape, are actually standing at it on six of the widest legs you never want to see. Now let's do the European version. We've now hit that part of the journey where we've gone as far as we can go, so we have to head north. You gonna get some coffee? I am. While pausing to restock the cooler, Mike's making sure that our next stop in Macomb will be a smooth one. Okay, well I'm gonna try Betty Mott here, and see if she's out of the hospital today, because if she's not out of the hospital, we got a big hole in this show. You got your mic on? I do. Isn't that handy that it's on? It's right there. It's turned on and everything. You got it on in the back? <laughs> How are you feeling this morning? Seems that Betty Maud, known around Macomb for her decorating touch, is still in the hospital. But thanks to the miracle of modern telephone technology, we'll guide us through her gingerbread house with vocal accompaniment from her grandson, Spencer. Somewhere over the rainbow. Welcome to the gingerbread land where dreams really do come true. Way up high. Well, now I'm, I'm stepping in the front door here. Okay. And what is it I'm going to see? Baby dolls of every description at tea parties. And they are uh, partying with Royal Dalton China. Oh, oh, I think I just broke, I just... Oh, no, oh, oh no, you're just not, darling. <laughs> I'll have the vapors. There's a land that I've heard of. You mind if I help myself to a little... Help yourself. What's in a lullaby? Betty, I can talk to you on this phone, too. The only thing I know better than one man is two. And it usually <laughs> takes two to equal one. <laughs> oh. Somewhere. We're pretty well pinned in here now, Betty. You got us at your mercy. <laughs> Do you like my house? Well, I'm, I've never seen anything quite like it. You never about? will again, either. <laughs> Skies are blue. Are you in the dining room? We're in the dining room, and we're looking around, and I'm seeing lots of beautiful china on the table. And, and I'm telling you, I'm seeing stuff, stuff, stuff. And the dreams that you dare to dream. <laughs> These are some lovely chocolates on the table. Can yes, I have, mind if I have one of those? Really do come true. Okay, we're gonna move into the Baby Hall of Fame. Okay, alrighty. This is just amazing. <laughs> what am I seeing? Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Oh, look at all that stuff. And Randy's exploring to see, oh, there's some chips. He wants to know if he can eat the Doritos. Away above the chimney top, that's where you'll Find me. So now we're in the bathroom. Okay. We're stepping into the. Wait a minute. This is a bathroom. You want me to do a little laundry for you while I'm here? Uh, I don't have any, darling. Not everybody has the decorate and touch like this. No, it is a gift, and God either gives it to you or he doesn't. Are you single by chance? I certainly am, and I will marry you. I've already had my blood work done. <laughs> and I, this bed looks very comfortable. Well, it is, darling. I do every bit of my interior decorating, Mike, in my bed at night, and then when I get up, I'm ready to place things. So when you're laying in bed at night, you're imagining this? Everything I do, I do in my bed. 
I can't touch that one. I'm sorry, <laughs> Betty. I gotta let that one go. If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh why can't I? What's your name, young man? Spencer, nice to meet you. Well, just remember you saw it here first, whatever it was, and that it was in Macomb, also known to fans of grassroots art as the home of the late, great rhinestone cowboy, Jimmy Boland. He wore a cowboy hat and it was covered in rhinestones around the band. His car had rhinestones all over it. And his bicycle had rhinestones all over it. He had rhinestones in his teeth, front teeth. You couldn't go to the local, you know, Walmart without seeing him out, hanging around out front, you know, talking to people. He was a real character. He loved talking to everybody. There's no sign of him around here now, but promotionally speaking, I can reveal that we will chase those rhinestones down in an upcoming show, should you ever be forced to watch us again. At any rate, after some more of that bad backing that Randy's so good at, we resume the driving portion of our show, steering in and out of some sudden southern storms and most, but not all, relics of the antebellum past. Kind of looks like Danny Thomas to me. Danny Thomas with a pillbox hat. This roadside revelation sits just outside Natchez on Highway 61 where our ever-observant eyes also spotted plenty of that green leafy substance that to us says the South. That's kudzu right there, spread all over everything. First kudzu shot of the trip. Speaking of things that pop up alongside the road, looks like the boys could not resist a chance to get another lesson in eating like the locals do. Oh yeah. All right, okay, everybody see? Take it and pull the tail out. And you might have to peel the, little, the, the very top shell off. But then the meat should just pull right out like that. I got it. Now what's this yellow stuff? <laughs> That's the seasoning. Why? Of course, there's that whole suck in the head thing. I don't do that, but most people around here do. But this vegetarian would prefer leaving that to your imagination. Besides, we've got weather issues as well, racing some very dark clouds up Highway 61 to Bovina, and I hope into Earl Simmons' gallery of art before being drenched by a Dixie deluge. Well, one time I was uh, working in, inside my mom's house, and she told me to, uh, I want you to go out and build your shop out there. <laughs> Start framing from the, from the ground up. Well, now, is it called Earl's Juke Joint, or? No, it's an art guy in Subinia Astro. That's what it is. Some called it Tree House. Some of them called it the, the Witch's Castle. <laughs> Everybody got their own name, what you want to call it. This must be quite a home. Yeah, it's got uh, 20, 30 rooms in it. So what is back there? Can this, this, uh, this is our game. Can we see it? Can Don see it? With the Fight this away. <laughs> Let's play father leader. <laughs> Watch your wall. Step back up there. Earl, how many steps do we have to take here? Uh, eleven. Thirteen. Lucky thirteen. Lucky thirteen. Oh my! Watch this, though. You didn't hit your head again, did you? Nope. <laughs> Here's the gallery. Gary Wan, the looking bird, the looking bird with the snow flecking off. Get my little taco and two kinds of sauce to put on each one of them. I like that flag on top. Yeah, it's called the call American Burger. Say that again. It's a American Burger. A miracle burger? American America. Burger, Mike. American Burger. Yeah. Got a veggie burger? They want a big burger. Big burger. And a Coke. No fries. That made from a uh, Head boy from a bed. I've had so little sleep, I hardly recognize it at first. <laughs> Does food interest you a lot? That's the biggest, my biggest sale, this food. Do you like to paint it? I love to paint it. More colors, I need more colors in it. What motivates you to make paintings? I got nothing to do. Keep my mind occupied. So I don't go to drawing and paint. And that, that's the roofing team. You take a ball off your hammer and whip it out, make it like what you want to like. We make bars and Coca-Cola bars and everything like that. What kind of fish is that? 
I really don't know. <laughs> Golf is not like. Do you lose yourself when you're doing these? Do they just, just do you just find yourself? Find myself lost on when I try to find myself, I come back. <laughs> you used to work in a sawmill, huh? That's where some of all this stuff come from. Mm -hmm. Y'all about the, the uh, first kind of guy to come through this way. You know what they say, Earl, no pain, no gain. <laughs> That's a good one. I take it you like living here. I love living here. <laughs> I was born next door. 23 years of the village, so it's a lot of big piece of art. It is a big piece of art, and after twisting, turning, and climbing through it, even the risks of a cheap motel sound pretty appealing. Vicksburg, here we come. This must be the place. Like the song says, what a difference a day makes. Unless, of course, you're still lugging around this heavy gear in tropical heat. At least the art that Kenneth Humphreys makes is easy to get to. Though he would admit the path of getting to it was for him a rocky one. You know, you have your ups and your downs. I had more downs than ups. Living in abandoned houses, couldn't hold a job, you know, um, broken marriage. That's part of life. You can't cry about it. You know, you had to get up and do what you got to do, you know. When I paint, I just feel good. I feel relaxed. It's like a high. And even when I was living in an abandoned house, just finding something to draw or something like that, it just, you forget, the, you know, you, you really forget where you are and, 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 and you're relaxed. I never thought I could make money at it, but um, I guess I am. <laughs> I mean, I do have a day job, you know, and it's inside the heat. What do you have as a day job? A landscaping job. And enough said on that one, huh? I'm working on a paint. I would like to finish it because I'm, 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 almost, you know, I'm over anxious to see what it looks like. You know, I like to see what it's gonna look like. And then once you see that, you want to go to something else, because your mind is constantly clicking, click, 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 click. You, you're constantly thinking about a million things all at one time. It's, it's everything that you do in a day. The people you meet, that's where you paint from. You know, I mean, it's, it's just your experience. I think it's a pretty nice paint. A lot of people don't like new. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that though. Because I mean, hey, you're getting out your clothes every day. I mean, how could you be ashamed of your body? This is kind of like a bad relationship gone bad. Well, the whole painting is really called confusion. It's not understanding the woman. See, the man is really looking at the lower part of a woman, not a breast. So that's why the breast is behind. It's, you know, it's a little weird, but you're painting your emotions. And when your emotions is through, it goes to something else. So I, I would guess that's why I paint so many paintings. Because every day I'm, I'm always, you know, whatever mood I'm in, that's what I'm doing. Once they finish, it kind of surprises me. I'm amazed that people, um, you know, that, that they're giving me a chance to do this. But the more I do it, the better I get, you know, because you're learning, you're constantly learning. I can't say the best is yet to come, I guarantee you. <laughs> wow, I brought her right down. That's weird, man. <laughs> yeah, day 11, and it looks like telekinesis is starting to set in. I might add that Kenneth's paintings are selling for a pretty penny these days, thanks in large part to the Attic Gallery, which has been supporting this kind of art for 30 years. They, of course, are closed on Sunday, much like the rest of downtown Vicksburg prompting this impromptu history report from a source you probably shouldn't trust. This is not a mini ball, but no. mini balls are what muskets used. Muskets were being fired like, I guess, crazy in here. One shot from a mini ball went through a, a soldier's region and crossed right through into a, a flower of the South's maidenhood region. And nine months later, miraculously, both had survived and she bore a child. That is the legend of the Confederate mini ball right here in Vicksburg. True? Speaking of balls, it's time for the show to come crashing to a halt, as it inevitably does while we play some quick catch in the shadow of an historic courthouse. Well, this is where vapor rub was invented, right? Vic Damone. Vic Damone's from here. Victor Victoria. Victor Victoria was written right here. In fact, I think in that vacant lot right up there. Must be, must be spring. Spring training. <laughs> That's the team they're bringing in to play us. We're 
playing the long cats now. And I suspect it won't be long until someone gets oh, hurt. Oh, Oh. <laughs> sure enough, in short order, we were packing up and heading on to our final stop, a place just outside town we've heard about for years. I'm talking about Margaret's Grocery, still known by that name, though no groceries are sold here any longer, just salvation. Courtesy of Margaret's second husband and one fine bricklayer, the Reverend H.D. Dennis. I'm a spiritual advisor. For every race, as you can look and see the signs, Jews and Gentiles, we must love each other. This is the new promised land. He did all that fixing work, and he worked very hard. And he did a good job at it. And, um, for the last two years, I did all the painting. Amen, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> I've been born again. God give me vision like it did John. You know, it seemed like me, it was too much of work on him to do. But he said, no, Margaret, I know what I'm doing, I can do it. I said, okay, and he got a chance, I mean, he did. He worked, I, I think he worked there now, he's been about, uh, He's been working on about 13 years, of course, and he still works. This, this black man is a Holy Ghost man. Black and raised, Japanese, German. We all are God's children, according to the bouquet of flowers here. You can't have a bouquet of flowers unless you got different colors, ain't you? Look at the clouds, different colors, trees, everywhere you live. You see, he give him a bouquet of flowers. He told me, he said, Margaret, see, I want, I want the word of God to get out. And he said, this is going to be my way. So I'm going to make it pretty and beautiful where I draw people's attention so they can come and, and I can tell them about Jesus Christ. God told me to do it his way. Anything God built, he can't fall. And God had to build it, but through man, because he ain't come down here and do nothing. God ain't been down here since he created man. He built that about 14 years now. He can't fall. We have people from all over, sea and everywhere come here and see us. Sure do. And they said they love to come here because this is the only spiritual place that they had been to around here. The only way you can drive a car away. You must pass it. Is that true or not? Yeah. You couldn't drive an automobile if you didn't pass it. Mm. Practice make you what? Perfect. Ah, you told me. One man wrote, <laughs> said Reverend Dennis's pulpit, the parking lot was his pulpit. <laughs> That's what he said, that was his parking lot was his pulpit. Glory, hallelujah. Let no man put him in sin. Love ye one another, even he love you. Some days I preach three, four sermons a day sometimes. I believe that. Every five years old. Been preaching to God for six or some years. We, he, my husband did a good job here. He really did. Uh, Reverend, Reverend Dennis is all right. This is a bus, right? Talk back to me. Talk back to me. I don't want people to talk back to me. You know this here is a bus from the outside of here. Now let's look on the inside and see if it look the same as a bus. Now based on what bus. you've seen so far, you might guess, and you'd be right, that the inside of this bus is unlike any other. A perfect place for a spiritual advisor to do some spiritual advice. Amen, go to hallelujah. Problem is, it doesn't take long before it's hot as you know what in here. Which is why, I suppose, we're already one weasel down. Seems Mike has slipped away to a more comfortable place, something we plan never to let him forget. Nor are we likely to forget Margaret's Grocery. Everything turns, Don. And the dynamic duo that's taken such pains to create it. Everything turns. Everything turns. You know, uh, he's 85 and I'm 86. And I think it, it would be very good idea if all old people you know, we'll just get up and do something, find you something to do instead of just sitting down. And sitting down don't make you do anything but get stiff and fat. But if you keep it working, 
<laughs> Keep them moving back. You will feel better and you feel like doing something. Some days I don't feel, I don't know, I know I'm old, but some days I don't feel old. <laughs> that just about says it all. So I'll just say, deep down in the Delta, this is Don the Camera Guy signing off. Is that the part where I said, you know, it's not surprising that it's raining? And you said, why? Why? I said, well, because this is Natchez. You can hardly get away without a trace. All right, now don't be pinching the doctor, okay? Don't be, don't do that, Betty. He's never gonna let you out of there. And that man has people on the next day. He's gonna be all right. Get back. <laughs> well, well, look. Kipper? Regular viewers of our show would know that that would be who? Uh, I thought it was Nipper. Hmm, Kipper. I eat, I eat chicken. Yeah. You don't eat no chicken. Yeah, you might be a little vegetable. Good for you. you Very gonna, hard, though. You, I know, but you're going to live a long time. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. <laughs>